Hi, this is Nathan Leahy from Mickey Thompson Tires and Wheels, and you're listening to the Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Jeep Mama, Josh, and Tony. So sit back. Strap in and brace yourself. Hey, it doesn't matter if you got a Jeep, you want a Jeep, never driven anything but a Jeep. This show is for you. Josh, Tammy, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about Jeeps. Hey there, I'm Tammy, aka Jeep Mama, and I've been a Jeeper for five years now. Oh my for god. <laughs> long time. <laughs> It's long for me. Uh-huh. Currently, I have a 2015 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, and I love to go off-roading and have learned so much about it and all things Jeep. And my passion is to share what I've learned in hopes to inspire others. And you know what? You can catch up and follow along on this amazing journey I've been on by checking out my blog at www.jeepmama.com. You know, Tammy, it... it uh, may, uh, Talking about the five years, uh, that doesn't sound very long to a lot of Jeepers out there, but you've packed a lot of stuff into that five years. You've been out to, to Mo, uh, Moab by yourself uh, and, and did well, wheeling, rented a, a Jeep and went wheeling, and uh, you've gone up to Rosh Creek. How many times now? A dozen? Two dozen? Something oh, like that? at least. Yeah. yeah so at least. You are A lot of activity in those five years. Hey, I'm Tony. You may remember me from past shows like the XJ Talk Show and the JTS Call-In Show. I like the color red and embarrassing people just to see it. Long walks on the beach and short walks to the bathroom are always a highlight of my day. And I have a bright, shiny red Cherokee that I purchased new in 97, 98, or 99. I don't know. It was a long time ago. It's it's really hard to remember. So, well, that's enough about me, Tammy. Uh, what's coming up in this episode? Well, Tony, on this episode, our guest this week is Jason Larson from Tuffy Security Products. Uh, more shopping. Mm, yeah, shopping. <laughs> uh, let me go get my credit card. Hold on. Um, and this week in Jeep, the first Jeep recall of 2019. Uh-oh. And in Wrangler Talk, I'm going to be talking about manual versus autom- automatic. And Tony, I hope you jump in on that too. And we're going to have our final ham segment with Josh, a.k.a. Hosh Nasi. And Nikki G is starting a podcast. You may have heard it here first, and so much more. Oh, I don't know. Competition uh, with with somebody. This is this reminds me of the Tracy Ullman show where the Simpsons just kind of took on a life of their own. They were just little breaks before and uh, after commercials, and then they took on this twenty six, twenty seven year career. I, I bet you this happens with uh, Nikki G. Could be, but he better pay us. You're welcome in advance, Nikki. Uh-huh. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. Hey, This Week in Jeep is brought to you by Amazon.com. Looking for a way to support the show? Well, of course you are. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and look for the little button that you click before going to uh, Amazon and buying anything that you want in you know, anything in your heart's content. Uh, and a small fraction from anything that you purchase using that link will go to the Jeep Talk Show. If you like what you hear, you've gotten any benefit from what we do here, then please consider giving back. That's jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. So Jeep makes the list, a best-selling vehicle of 2018. Tony, I don't know if you've noticed this, but the past several months, I've been seeing more SUVs and crossover vehicles on the roads than I've seen vehicle or cars. Oh my God, they're everywhere, yes. And, you know, it seems like it's, a boom, an SUV boom. And because of that, it's decimating the sales of passenger cars. Now, I love the fact that I see more SUVs. However, it's having a nasty side effect to raising the average price of new vehicles. According to Cox Automotive, the parent company, Kelly Blue Book and Auto Trader, in 2015, cars represented 43% of the sales. It dropped considerably in 2018 to 30%. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know. That's a lot. Uh, that's a lot of less cars on the road. Now, they're projecting in 2019 about one in every two vehicles sold are going to be SUVs and crossovers. And that's according to projections by the car buying advice sites, ad, site Edmunds. 
I don't so, know, Tammy. Have you even considered uh, purchasing a car? Did you have you ever thought to yourself, like, you know, I wouldn't mind having a car. Get out of this uh, this this big old Jeep lifted Jeep and uh, get down low where I can't see where the hell's <laughs> where, you know, what's going on in traffic and <laughs> and I think that's one of the things, Tony. Is I got into my husband's Mercedes and I'm like, oh no, I cannot be this low. And I think we are so used to being up so high and we feel so much safer. I'm wondering if that's it. I don't know if you've experienced this, but you, you can see the third brake light uh, four or five cars ahead of you, depending on you know what's in front of you. Right. And exactly. uh, even if it's a truck in front of you, because you can see through the wind, their windshield and their back glass, and you can you have a lot more time to anticipate a, 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 a emergency stop that way. Exactly. Now, one of the bad things about it is, Tony, those larger vehicles are so much more expensive than their smaller car counterparts. Average vehicle prices in November were up 9% from three years oh. earlier to an all-time high of just over 37 k Now, that's $17,000 more than my parents paid for their first house. Yeah, that's kind of scary. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I, I wasn't, I'm not that old, but I remember hearing about uh, soldiers returning from World War II buying houses for $5,000 and, and now yep. vehicles costing. And these aren't, these aren't expensive vehicles. There's no. some expensive vehicles out there like trucks that are upwards of right. uh, 80 k Yeah. Yeah. Now, that aside, it should come as no surprise that four of the six vehicles on the list of the hottest selling models of 2018 are SUVs or crossovers. And the number one <laughs> topping that list is, that's why we're here, folks, a Jeep. Yep. <laughs> and red Jeeps are even more on the list than, uh, than it's, yeah. not, it's not here, but you know, not in this story, but I, we all know right. that's true. Now, the 2018 list of the hottest selling new vehicles in the auto industry, based on a subjective mix of increased sales volumes, momentum, buzz, and industry chatter, has, drumroll, the Jeep Compass at the top of its list. I would have never guessed that. Um, its 2018 sales were up 106% from the prior year, selling a very respectable 171,167 units i think i know it's that's a lot of i wonder how many wranglers were sold anyway i think 2019 is going to be year of the best jeep that's been made and that's the wrangler tony do you think so you know uh i'll just go back to what i was sort of been saying all along when we finally saw the jl come out i thought that uh, jeep did a really good job they stayed uh, real close to uh to the roots of the jeep uh wrangler uh the original uh, the original Jeep that was used in uh, World War II, uh, not the Wrangler, of course, but um, I, I, it, it kind of has that that heart, uh, that Jeep heart to it. So I think it will do well. Uh, I'm kind of having a little bit of a hard time getting used to those uh, louvers or whatever you call the little things that are little dimples that are on the, the sides of the, the fenders, you know, the ones that are supposed to keep the hood from fluttering. Uh, that's, that's, oh, kind yeah, of the yeah, only, yeah. that's kind of the only problem I have with it, uh, really, right. is just that, that look. Uh, I kind of like this to see the, maybe I'm just used to the, the fenders being nice and flat across there. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's barely 2019 and already Jeep is announcing what appears to be a pretty serious recall of approximately 86,000 of their 2019 model Jeep Cherokees equipped with the 2.4 liter engines. Uh, this is not good, but, uh, that again, we've been warning you about the, the new Cherokees, right. haven't we? <laughs> You have. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I just it, it kind of goes along with that SUV crossover thing, isn't it? Because this isn't really uh, – what am I trying to say here without pissing people off? I don't want to say right, it's really no. not technically a Jeep. It's not the, no, I know the what your you're typical saying. shape of a Jeep. Right. It looks more like a, a crossover that vehicle. That rounded crossover, exactly. Yeah. So, and, and, it, it, and obviously Jeep has done their, their homework because this is a lot of what, what you were just talking about in the prior story. People are liking the SUVs. And the crossover vehicles. So uh, due to a malfunctioning powertrain uh, controller, uh, in rare instances, I always love how they put the rare instances in there, uh, mm -hmm. the affected vehicles will exhibit an in engine stall during deceleration, most often while slowing to a stop, increasing the risk of a crash. And, and of course, I don't know if that makes sense to you, uh, to Tammy, or maybe some of our uh, listeners, but basically, no. you know, you lose the uh, hydraulics for the power steering uh, you lose uh, okay. uh, the, the any uh, brake boost that you may have, uh, and uh, you know if you can't steer it easily like you're used to, 
and the brakes don't work as well as they were doing whenever you had the, the assist, then it could lead to a crash. And I think that's what they're talking about here. Right. That makes sense. So FC, uh, <laughs> FCA said in a press release regarding this recall that the engine may, uh, may be immediately restarted if the stall occurs. It's okay. I might like to, do gonna think of, to do that. Like you're going to think to do that. <laughs> Well, and, and, and if you, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, Tammy, but uh, if the engine stalls on you and you, if you have an automatic and you have it in drive and you go, oh my God, what's going on? What's going on? You hit that key and try to restart and nothing happens. Oh no. Oh no. Do I got to call AAA? It's like, no, you got to put it in park or neutral. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so I can see how this would be a serious situation if you're not, uh, if you're cruising along and it dies on you and you go to restart it, but you, you're not thinking about, I got to, you know put this thing in park or neutral uh, to restart it, it's going to take you a few seconds. There's going to be horns honking and it's going to make you more stressed. Right. It's, it's not a good situation. It's, it's a, uh, it's a scary, bad situation that is easily re- uh, resolved as far as restart and continue. So I, I was just going to say, I think my first reaction would be to put it in neutral. I don't know. That's what I'm guessing I would do. I always, I, I grab the key and start trying to start it. Like, what's going on? Right. I'm looking at the dash and, no, the engine's not running. That's strange. It's always running, you know, and why did it die? Uh, anyway. I hope so, I never have to find out. <laughs> depending how long you have your vehicle, you will. Because it's, it's right. like we were talking about death wobble. Uh, if you've got a solid front axle, eventually you're going to get, uh, you're going to experience death wobble. Right. It may be a long time, but eventually it's going to happen. So with uh, most every aspect of the drivetrain and these newer Jeeps being controlled by computers, all dealers will ha- uh, have to do is reflash the powertrain controller. Oh, that's it. This just reload the put in a new uh, a new right. piece of software uh, into the the computer. Uh, and, uh, of course they'll be doing this for free and damn well ought to be because when somebody buys a vehicle, they expect it to run. And right. If it doesn't, it, uh, it needs to be taken back and fixed, which of course is what they're talking about doing here. Well, I would hope they would do it for free because like you said, you know, it's a new vehicle, you know, it should be under warranty. You know, when you take your time to go and purchase a vehicle, especially if you have to go and deal with salespeople and everything else, you, you spend a fair amount of time purchasing that vehicle. I don't like the idea that now, I don't care if it is free, you're still uh, spending uh, my time because mm-hmm. I have to go down there and, you know, are you going to provide right. me with another vehicle to drive while, you know, people, I don't know about you, Tammy, I don't have a spare vehicle to, to drive whenever one's down. That'd you know, be nice. Is, yeah. It's our family vehicle. Yeah. That, yeah, the I mean, Jeep is. That'd be, I mean, it'd be nice to have, you know, two or three vehicles just right. laying around and, and the money uh, to, to pay insurance to, to keep them all insured. But that's not the way people normally work. So, you know, it's great that FCA says, hey, we'll do this for free, but where's the rest of the stuff? And and how much how, how much time is it going to take for people to get, actually get in and get this thing done? Because, right. you know, there are a few of these Jeep Cherokees out there on the road. So uh, I don't know how, uh, how much uh, time it's going to re- require for these people to actually have to wait and get it fixed. Anyway, FCA did not immediately announce the owner notification schedule. So if you know someone uh, that has purchased a new 2019 uh, Cherokee with a 2.4 liter engine, you will need uh, to have them call Jeep directly at 800-853-1403 or call the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, which I don't think FCA wants you to call those folks, uh, hotline at 888.327.4236 or visit the website to check their vehicle identification number to learn more. We'll, of course, have those numbers and the link uh, to the NHTSA in the show notes for today's episode. Uh, so, uh, of course, the uh, NH, you can always go over to the NHTSA.gov site and uh, look it up yourself. I don't know, Tammy. I'm glad I don't have a Cherokee, at least 20, 2019 Cherokee with right. a 2.4 liter engine. And I've seen so many of them. And actually, my son, you know, he works at CarMax, and he's driven a few of them. And he says they're actually really nice. You know, I saw a thing today. I think it was a Jalopnik uh, had a post about uh, a lot of people are bypassing uh, going and talking to, uh, going to the dealer and picking their vehicles. They're going online and, and purchasing vehicles. And one of the things they showed was... Uh, the, the big vending machine that has all the cars in it. So you just, Oh, yeah, that is so weird. You go in there and press the button. And, of course, right. I, I immediately posted, I don't know, since I uh, got a bag of chips hung up in a vending machine once, I never use a vending machine again. Could you imagine shaking one of those things to get, get your car out of there? Come on. <laughs> 
Hey, if you got a news tip or you have uh, any response to any one of our stories, make sure to let us know by phone or email. Just head over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how. Hey, coming up later in the show, we have an interview with Jason Larson uh, with Tuffy Security Products. Tammy, did you know that they actually have, you know, Tuffy makes really good products. But they, they, they've got a, a, a really good price associated with a lot of them. Not that it's not worth it, but it's just you think of it being uh, uh, pricey things, uh, good quality, pro- but, but good price associated with it. I found while doing some research, they actually have a product that only costs $19. Oh, did you buy it? <laughs> no, but we. <laughs> but I'm going to ask uh, Jason about it in the uh, the interview because I was just blown away. <laughs> You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. You know, we're always asking you to go check out the 4x4 Radio Network, and it's for good reason. There's a ton of great shows there to check out beside ours. Uh, tell your friends, too. <laughs> we all, we've we got something for everyone. The 4x4radionetwork.com uh, is all about On the Trail podcast, uh, Trail Chasers, Citrusure podcast, and don't forget about Dan over at the 4x4 podcast. Lots of great off-road shows, and it's all for free. I recommend you subscribe because you can subscribe for free. And it's all at 4x4radionetwork.com. And we'll see you there. Hello, Jeep Talk Show. This is Jim Fliggy calling from Dallas, Texas. And I wanted to know if Tony was planning on going to the uh, Lone Star Jeep Invasion in March. I believe it's the 22nd, 3rd, 23rd, and 24th. Um, haven't uh, heard anything about it, and it's supposed to be the first Jeep invasion in Texas. Um, hope to hear about it on the show or at least get a uh, comment about it somewhere. Have a good New Year. Hey, Jim. Wow. Thanks a lot for calling. And uh, I had not heard about that, or if I did, I had forgotten. But, uh, I mean, I, I don't know about you, Tammy, but I've heard about several Jeep invasions. I didn't wasn't aware that... Texas had never had one. Right. Usually the Jeep invasions I hear about are like on the beach. Yeah. Uh, or especially out there on the East Coast. I mean, uh, right. but maybe, a- not, maybe not the coast. Uh, it can be far in the, inland on the coast, <laughs> I suppose. But uh, like in uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, up in your neck of the woods. Yeah, New uh, Jersey has yeah, one. Yeah. Ocean City. So, uh, yeah, it sounds really interesting. The only thing uh, I can say about it is, is that if it's multiple days, I wouldn't make it more than one day. And uh, it's about, uh, uh, I have to check and see where, where exactly where it is, but Dallas is about a four-hour drive from here. So that would be a, a long day. Uh, would love to go. I just wish these things weren't so far away. Um, no, and, I know. That's what so, that stinks. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I know you drive a long ways uh, to go to things, Tammy. Um, but uh, if it's in Texas, you think, well, you're in Texas. It's not, can't be that far away. But if you're a longtime Texas resident or native like I am, <laughs> you go, oh my God, that's a long drive. Because uh, uh, I don't know, if, Tammy, if you got that uh, that picture that I sent you and Josh the other day, where it showed this circle around. Yeah, Texas. I was, I wasn't quite sure what that was about. Yeah, that's that's if you drove, if you drove from one side of Texas to the other, and then that that distance. Oh, uh, okay, I get it now. And yep. it gives you an idea that if you were driving outside of Texas someplace, you would have to go that far to drive the equal right. amount of distance of Texas, and it was uh. almost to Canada. So, right. you know, Texas is huge. I mean, I don't know how the uh, how how they do it in Alaska because Alaska is bigger and uh, California is right. bigger. Uh, but uh, that's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think a lot of people have a, a misunderstanding about uh, driving from one place to the other. You're, you're actually quite lucky to be where you are, Tammy, for the standpoint of uh, going places because right. uh, even Ross Creek, what is it, a four-hour drive for you? Um, it's about two and a half. Oh, okay. So four-hour round trip. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Not so bad for, for the day then. It's a long day, though, because you spend the whole time in your vehicle. But, yeah, it's not that bad. Shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut Man, up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. Shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler Talk. It's time for G-Mama. Tammy, I think I would have started with, uh, well, now we're going to shift gears and talk about manual versus automatic. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> I just killed That's myself. That's a good one. Um. <laughs> What I was going to say is I feel like I've stepped it up a notch in this whole Jeep knowledge 
Well, of course you have. Thing, um, because I have been getting questions from listeners, um, my subscribers on YouTube and my blog. And like people are reaching out to me and asking me these questions. And they're usually new Jeepers. And I think a lot of it stems from them listening to the podcast and hearing that I'm, you know, sharing this and asking you guys like questions that more experienced Jeepers would know. And they're, they're feeling comfortable that they can ask these questions. Well, with that said, I got a question and this is from Laura and she says, love your podcast. I have learned so much already from just from listening to just a few episodes. You may have already covered this in an earlier podcast, but I'm interested to know your opinion on manual versus automatic transmission and off-roading. I currently drive a Baja Yellow JKU Sahara with a manual transmission. I love the manual transmission, but it is more challenging on the trail. I am toying with the idea of getting an automatic Rubicon. Interested to know your opinion. Thanks for all you do. Yellow Jeeps rock. Laura. Now, personally, and Tony, I'll let you jump in here as soon as I'm done, but off-roading on rocks, especially if you haven't done it a lot and you're still feeling your way around and um, working your way up to like the bigger obstacles, I feel an automatic is better because you're not having to, like especially going up the hills, you're not going to be rolling back that little bit that you roll when you're using your clutch. And the other thing about that is I've heard so many people burn out their clutch because of the off-roading or because they have gone through water obstacles and they've had to replace their clutch. So personally for me, as a new, which I'm kind of in the middle of being new and somewhat experienced, I I would go with an automatic. If you're going to be off-roading on like rocks and stuff. Um, But as for just driving a manual, everyday driving, I would love, uh, that's what I learned to drive on. That's what I drove for years and years. Um, They're hard to come by now, but um, I kind of miss it. But as for off-roading on rocks, I would say um, the automatic. So there's there's two things that I don't like about automatics. And uh, let's see, one that I can remember right hand, right offhand, maybe I'll remember the other one here in a second. Uh, the, the thing that I don't like about automatics is they uh, eventually fail. And they cost a hell of a lot of money to f- have repaired. Um, thousands of dollars. And I think that a um, uh, standard transmission, and, I, and I, I've never messed with a Jeep uh, transmission, standard transmission, it's uh, old, an old vehicle that was actually a Muncie four-speed. Uh, much simpler construction, much easier to work on, uh, much easier to understand, at least was for me. So it would have been much easier for me to, to work on and was, and cheaper. Uh, and uh, smaller and easier to remove, uh, pressure plate, uh, clutch disc, uh, resurfacing the, uh, the, the uh, um, oh man, I'm brain farting, the thing that's connected to the, the crank, not the pressure plate, the flywheel. Uh, resurfacing the flywheel, all that stuff is uh, is very common to me. So I kind of lean towards the, the the manual side of things. And frankly, when I think of a off-road vehicle, I've always thought that having more control over your transmission is the thing, is just another aspect of having that ability to do things off-road. I, I And I'd love to hear from you guys that have actually wheeled with a, with a standard transmission uh, as far as burning up the clutch, because I personally think that you can uh, learn how to not burn up the clutch uh, <laughs> to simply by uh, not over revving the engine and uh, or, or sitting there riding the the clutch pedal, right. uh, feathering the clutch to you know to keep you from going places. I mean that's what you got to break for. That's why what you got that center um, uh, brake uh, pull up for is uh, you know there's there's things that you can do that that will keep you from having to burn up that clutch. So, and using the two feet on three pedals, which uh, if anybody has driven a manual for uh, very long has had to do at some point in time. So I personally love the idea of the simplicity of a manual transmission. Uh, the, uh, the uh, what I perceive to be anyway, uh, a cheaper uh, repair or, or easier to replace. 
Uh, and uh, then I do the automatics. Automatics is a big fat unknown for me and a big fat uh, expensive unknown for me that I'm going to have to go to somebody else to have it fixed. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I'm sure I could learn how to rebuild a transmission, but it probably would be my second or third uh, attempt at it before I got it right. Yeah, I just think you have to have such a finesse with using those pedals when you're on the rocks. You do. Especially, you know, if you're in a very precarious position, you know, just damaging your Jeep that way, I would, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Just for me uh, no, personally. No, hands down, I agree with you. It's going to be much easier right. to off-road with an automatic transmission. Uh, but I, I think there's a lot of benefits with the manual uh, that you get both on and off right. road and on and on road uh, miles per gallon because you're in control. That's the great thing about a manual transmission. You're in control of when that clutch engages and when it engages fully. That means it's not slipping. That means you're getting uh, the most power you can get from the engine to the rear wheels. Right. And if you can do that quicker than what an and, uh, automatic transmission slips into, just simply for your comfort. Uh, then uh, obviously the miles per gallon is going to go up as you let that clutch out than sitting there letting it slip like the automatic does. So uh, it's it's a hard it's a hard call, uh, and I think you may wind up having to replace a clutch and a flywheel and a pressure plate right. a couple of times <laughs> because you go learning. But eventually, I think you would do well with a with a manual transmission. Right. I think for me, like the next logical step for me to be. Um, you know, once you, you know, how we've always said it's best to learn how to wheel in a stock vehicle. You get to know what the Jeep can do. You learn how to pick your lines. You're, you know, and, and then you gradually move to a lifted Jeep. And then I think for me, the next step would be when I get another Jeep, I'm obviously going to keep my Jeep that I have now, but it would be cool to get once I've mastered somewhat wheeling on, you know, the blues and the blacks. Then my next step, I think, logically would be to get a manual and learn how to finesse those rocks with the clutch and using, you know, all those different pedals. Anyway, that would be, you know, my next step up in the process. Have you run across anybody that uh, has a uh, standard transmission that's out there in Rosh Creek that you could maybe peek in and ask them some questions about when you're there? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people that I know who who drive manual um Wranglers out on the trails. I'd, I'd be curious to know because, like I've make it very clear, I have no experience off roading uh, in a uh, uh, with a manual transmission. I have a lot of manual and transmission experience in in vehicles, uh, but uh, and even the the TJ that uh, that we have. I mean, it's the manuals are fun. I like that. I want to say I want to say Nate has a manual. I think, and I'm pretty sure Jody is who he I wheeled with him. And the girl that was guiding the G or the we women's wheeling event, Courtney, she was my trail. She was the um, the guide, and I was the gunner. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty sure she has a manual too. You know, the gunner sounds really exciting. If you got an actual gun, that would be yeah. Hey, you can make a line. Boom. <laughs> you're on, You're not in line. <laughs> Get back in line. You're holding up the line. You're driving a red Jeep. Boom. Yeah. I, I don't like red. That's why. Just get back in right. line. There goes your tire. Um, oh, and I'll just mention my, my Cherokee is an automatic. Uh, but in my defense, <laughs> I said, yeah, this is a nice Cherokee. You love it. Love the way it's set up. Do you have one in uh, in standard? And they said, oh, oh, we'd have to call the factory. You'd have to have it special made. And I'm like, you know, okay, fine. I even knew at the time. Right. Was a, but there was a lot of a BS. Basically, they didn't have a, a standard transmission Cherokee at the time because, hey, it's a four-wheel drive. I firmly believed, at least at that point in time, that, it, you know, if you've got a four-wheel drive, it's an off-road rugged vehicle. You need to have a standard transmission because that's what it's all about is going places and doing things and you need that additional control. And I was surprised to find out in later years that uh, that people uh, prefer automatics for, for the rock crawling. I thought about it, uh, yeah. heard a few things, and it makes sense. And now it's time for some Radio Com Tech. All right. Well, we've studied, we've passed our test, and now we get to buy us a radio. Now, you may have cheated and gone straight for the radio before you uh, even started studying for the test, but that's okay. I'm sure you'd still like to know uh, what uh, what we think a good radio would be. 
Now, uh, we're talking again with Josh this week, and of course, I was mentioning we're going to be picking your first radio after passing that ham test. Now, Josh, as you know, uh, is Hosh Nazi. He's been a licensed operator since 2007 as KI6NAZ. And, uh, well, you know, he probably he's probably best known for his YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash Hosh Nazi, and uh, it's H-O-S- N A S I. I keep saying Z I, but it's not. It's not. You know, it's not Zig Heil. It's not the, no. the Third Reich. It's no. Nazi. <laughs> Unrelated to any of that. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I just want to and I just want to mention one more time because this is a really important part. If you want to ask Josh a question directly, just do a search for Ham Radio Crash Course, and you'll find where you can uh, communicate him with directly, probably on Discord. And I, I, I firmly recommend that, especially if you're watching his live show on YouTube yeah. on Friday night. They all get together on Discord afterwards, and it is a uh, uh, well. Uh, hey, how can I say this nice? It's it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of yes. uh, back and forth. And one thing I really like that you do, Josh, and you, and you're very good about this. Uh, is you ask, hey, anybody here new? Anybody here new want to ask a question? So it's not just a jump in. Let me have uh, let me blow off some steam after the live show. Let me have fun. It's like let's let's get down to business. We're here for the newbies. We want to know what you need to know. And of course, that's one of the reasons why you've agreed to do this series. So yeah, and generally everybody got has a really important question when they're starting out and if they oh, just yeah. got that answered they can move forward kind of thing yeah and uh and the most basic uh, questions are very important because we've all had to go through those basic questions and uh, it's it's so much nicer getting past that point so you can move forward now this week we're going to talk about picking your first radio now josh i, I know you have opinions on this so many <laughs> so <laughs> Boy, let's let's dive in, but we won't make this long. So basically, you kind of have two schools of thought here. A handheld radio, something that you can carry on your person, or like a mobile radio. Since you guys are Jeep enthusiasts and you're in your Jeep a lot, um, I generally recommend a mobile in a lot of cases for people that are going to be like in your situation. The reason is is pretty simple. Mobile radios, while bigger, and, and you know, I'm, I'm being told that there's not a lot of real estate in some cases on a Jeep. You got a lot more power and you can use a much better antenna because you're mounting it to your big, you know, metal Jeep or something with metal in it. You're going to have a lot better radio experience. So I generally recommend people go with a mobile if they can. However, if they're going to be going out, you know, just hiking or they're not going to be in their cars that much, handhelds are, you're going to end up with a handheld no matter what. Many people start with a Baofeng these days, and those are those cheap $25 to $60 units you can get on Amazon. Now, now wait a second. You said mm-hmm. $25, for $25 for a yes. ham radio. For a ham radio. Wow. Now, um, generally, of the Baofeng line, I recommend the BF f 8 hp That is, uh, to me, a little bit more robust radio compared to the UV5R, which is the $25 one. So unfortunately, I just just, uh, made you pay $65 to get that (laughs) BFF8HP. For a mobile, though, there's lots of options, and most of these units have head units or face plates that are removable that you can mount on your dash real flush and really clean. And then you kind of just bury the radio inside your dash somewhere or under a seat like I have in my car. And boy, I got a lot of recommendations there. Do you run one right now, uh, mobile? Uh, I run a uh, 706 uh, Mark II Model G. Okay. So I have a Yaesu FTM 400. Uh, That is a $400 $400 radio, so a big step up from $65, but mine has GPS enabled and it does um, packet radio, which allows people to actually follow my progress and we can do text messaging and that kind of stuff. But if you want something cheaper, um, TYT 9800, an amazing radio, good analog radio that has lots of power and um, you can do some it kind of advanced features with it. Yeah, those are great, uh, great options. Now, um, would you think that getting a handheld first and getting a mobile later would be a bad thing? I mean, you could always use that handheld uh, when you step out of the Jeep. Not at all. So don't let me say mobile first is that's the only way to go here. No, um, I'm just saying don't forget the mobile. You're going to fall into a Baofeng at some point. You're going to trip over one <laughs> when you're walking down the street because they're everywhere. Um, but don't forget the mobile because it really does help. Because remember, if you're using a handheld in a car, 
Jeeps have less of a problem if you don't have that metal roof. But that's a Faraday cage to a large extent. So your antenna in your handy talkie is really not going to get out when you're inside a car. You need that antenna outside your, you know, rolling metal cage. And it's also possible to mount a uh, two meter, 70 centimeter, uh, either one or dual band antenna on your Jeep and use it with your handheld. It, it's not going to work as good, yes. um, but it because will, but it will be better. You still have five watts, usually in a handy talkie versus 50. You want more power. And the thing to consider here, too, is the SMA connector that goes into the antenna. Those really aren't meant to be constantly on and off and on and off and on and off. So there are some considerations there. But again, it's if it's a $25 radio, who cares? <laughs> right. Well, we're, we're going to get the 61 based on what you were saying. Well, yeah, that would be my recommendation. But maybe you'd think about a B and C adapter. Much more acronyms for you. Yeah. Now, there's there's one thing that we didn't cover, and I, I don't want to cover a lot of it, but something that might be uh, appealing to people. They, the, a lot of people don't understand about the, the connection between the, the frequency that you're using and the length of the antenna. So when we're talking about putting an external antenna in your Jeep, we're not talking about your typical 102-inch uh, whip like you would ha have for a CB. We're talking about a much shorter antenna that people probably aren't going to even notice. Yeah, and, and let's CB is really easy one to consider if you're comparing it to the radios we're talking about. CB is uh, 11 meters. That's a physical wavelength. The physical wave, the RF, is 11 meters. We're talking about 2-meter radio and 70-centimeter radio. And the antennas that we operate for those bands are usually one quarter of the full wavelength. So uh, two meters being what, little over six feet? Yeah, about six We're talking feet. one quarter of that is an effective two meter antenna. So these are tiny antennas. And when you're off road, you really will not have to be concerned about the antenna whipping around and hitting spotters or anybody like that when you do, like you would have to do with a 102 inch whip. And a lot of people yep. use the three or four foot, whatever those uh, uh, short trucker antennas are. Uh, even those can even yeah. those can uh, slap people around. Or I guess that's a fire stick. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, fire, fire stick. stick. Yeah. I think there's yeah. several manufacturers, but the fire stick, the fire stick is the most popular. Yeah, so the logistics of an antenna is not going to look much different than like the radio antenna for your FM radio. Exactly. Uh, it's actually a little shorter, and it, it's really nice because you're you're getting all this power out, and we haven't even touched repeater operation. So uh, there's there's things out there that you could do in ham radio that are not available in the the CB realm. Uh, but we could go on and on and on. So, Josh, uh, just remind everybody to find you over there at uh, youtube.com slash hotsotsy. And uh, make sure that you do a search for the Ham Radio Crash Course. And, on Facebook. Uh, yeah. On if you get your license, please join and tell everybody, hey, I got my license. We really appreciate it. We'll give you a big congrats. And, and it's a lot of fun. And, and only blame Josh for it. Don't blame me. Well, blame your, well, your <laughs> wife's going to be mad at me because I'm going to kill her wallet. <laughs> That's true. Well, thanks again, Josh. We really appreciate this and uh, very informative and uh, fun. Thank you very much. Hey, Jeep Talk Show people. I heard in a recent episode that you guys have the Jeep Talk Show stickers in. Love to get my hands on a set of those. Um, wasn't quite for sure how it worked, though. I heard that you guys wanted us to leave a voicemail, um, and we had to send in a self-addressed stamped envelope to uh, an address you're going to send us. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Tammy, I am holding in my hand uh, the first self-addressed stamped envelope Yay! that I received today, and it actually looks like they uh, they sent a, a big enough envelope for for it to not to be folded in. So uh, this one will be going out in uh, six to eight weeks. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Oh, well, I that didn't surprise me at all. <laughs> well, that you know that was that's always that's my my idea was it was always the the, the issue was is it was trying to. Uh, fill out all the information on the right. envelope and stuff was my main issue. Now all I have to do is stick a couple of uh, stickers in there and uh, drop it in a mailbox. Uh, and uh, all the heavy lifting really is done by the USPS. Right. So anyway, got the first one in, which I'm glad to see. I'm glad to see somebody took us up on that. Now, uh, Kevin, thanks a lot for listening to the show. And Kevin gave us a great uh, review. I think we used last uh, last week's show. Uh, over at uh, our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash Jeep Talk Show slash reviews. If you guys would like to go over there and uh, see a few of those. And, and Kevin, uh, Kevin's had a beautiful picture of a nice, bright, shiny red Jeep that uh, JL that he just bought. Uh, this is when Tammy jumps in and says, it's green. 
So it's a very pretty green too. It's a bright green, which is good. Yes, I love it. Jeep should be bright colors. Uh, but anyway, uh, so oh, yeah, this, yeah. just to let you know, Kevin, Kevin called in on our speak pipe and uh, the, the, the audio is wonderful there, but I have a problem sending back text messages. So what I'd like for anybody to do that wants a sticker, go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and call the voicemail or, or send us a text message on the voicemail number. Uh, I think it's uh, 530-675-4102, but go, go to the contact page to verify that. And really, I just need a text message letting me know that you want a uh, that you want to send a self-addressed stamp envelope for stickers, and I will provide you uh, the the mailing address where you send that to. Now, you may wonder why don't you just say that? It's my home address, <laughs> and frankly, I'd rather just right. tell you what my home address is, and not everybody that listens to this show. I mean, it's right. it's, it's not a huge secret. It's just you know. Uh, it's just one of those things you just don't. It's a privacy thing. That's yeah, hard. To, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. So anyway, that's the reason for that. And uh, part of the reason uh, it took a while for us actually to do this was that that issue. Uh, I didn't know if I should go get a P.O. box and then give out the P.O. box information. And then I thought to myself, well, you thought it took a long time to send out stickers whenever I had your address. Now let's add me going having to go to the post office box. <laughs> So, you know, we need to make it as easy for me as possible. Believe, believe me. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's the reason for that. So just go over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, uh, send a, a voicemail message or uh, a text message uh, to the number that you see there. Uh, the I think it again is 530-675-4102. And uh, just let us know you want uh, some some stickers. Now, Tammy, I've been thinking of something uh, that uh, that might work out. Uh, you remember our friends over at the Jeep Mafia, don't you? Of course. And uh, they hand out those uh, those koozies. Actually, koozies. They, they don't hand them out. They uh, they stick them, oh, stick they, them on yeah, the Jeeps. Oh, yeah, they koozie you. Yeah. We could give them to people to put. That's a really good idea. So I was thinking about uh, coming up with the original idea of <laughs> placing yeah. placing our, our stuff on other Jeeps. Jeep Mafia, he's just kidding. He's just kidding. <laughs> Well, obviously copying them. Uh, right. And uh, so what I was That's thinking. That's the best form of flattery. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we'll go with that. So I was thinking that if you guys might like to be, I don't know, Jeep talk show ambassadors to take a, to steal from uh, yet another uh, great uh, Route 16 folks, um, that maybe you guys could uh, just let me know. And I'll, th- I'll throw in an extra sticker or two. I think we can go up to one ounce uh, on the, the, the envelopes and not have to pay additional uh, postage. So I think with the stamp that you've already stuck on there, that I could go up to one ounce and I could throw some uh, some Jeep Talk Show business cards in there and uh, a few extra stickers if you guys wanted to uh, hand those out. And when I say hand them out, uh, basically uh, put them on unsuspecting Jeeps. Now, I don't mean stick them on there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just put them someplace to give them the option of, uh, you know, reading the Putting card or, exactly. <laughs> or, you know, putting the sticker on their on their Jeep. So uh, if you if you guys are interested in doing that, just let me know in the voicemail or in the text messages you, that you send, and uh, I'll throw some uh, additional stuff in there as long as it doesn't go over the uh, the one ounce uh, barrier that we have. Or we could have people put them on Hummers and you know FJs. And, I, st- I still would like you know. to get somebody uh, in the military that's uh, you know deployed uh, to get somebody to stick one on an M1 Abrams tank. Right. <laughs> That'd be funny. And not get car marshaled. So, uh, but yeah, I get a picture of it. That, that'd be really funny. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. I remember when Josh uh, first did that promo and uh, he went out. There was some event that he went to and uh, he got all those things. It was hilarious. This hearing the stuff that people were saying was just right. hilarious. From around the world. Or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. 
All right, boys and girls, we're back with another interview uh, for this week, and uh, we're going to be talking with Jason at Tuffy. You know, Jason has been working at Tuffy Security Products for two years. Uh, Jason says it is great a great company to, uh, to represent due to the high-quality products that they manufacture. Jason's interest in motors started when he was uh, six, driving a tractor with his dad for the first time. God, that had to have been fun, especially for a six-year-old. Uh, Jason mm-hmm. says nothing is more exciting than turning the key and hearing a motor start up, and I think we all know how how that uh, that feels. Uh, growing up on a farm, vehicles were constantly needing repair, and he found himself helping his grandpa every chance he had. By 13, he, he had built his first go-kart, which I never had a go-kart, Jason, so screw you. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> you know don't hang up yet uh he's between projects right now and uh, jason and his wife haven't decided if they want a jl or if they want to work on a mildly uh built commando down the road you can find out more about tuffy security products by visiting tuffyproducts.com and put the obligatory www on the front of that okay jason thanks a lot for being with us sorry about the screw you comment <laughs> uh, I'm still here, so no worries on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody, any any male child that has uh, uh, grown up and never had a, a go kart, and the the kid down the street, uh, you know, back and forth down the street, <laughs> had one. Well, I think we can all sympathize with the screw you comment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, you got to build something. I mean, if you want to drive it, you got to build it. So yeah, yeah. Now, I, like I was, uh, like I was, uh, uh, well, like I always tell people, you know, if you're going to build a go kart, you got to, as long as it's not one of those things that you see on the internet uh, with the the V8s, the full size V8s on the back <laughs> of a go kart, the the engine you had to use was a Briggs and Stratton, and because uh, you mm-hmm. know you could uh, get the power and uh, and get the longevity out of that thing, you can. I could just see people taking the the go karts back and forth to work because the longevity of the engine. But so yeah, that's great. And uh, uh, how long did the how long did the go kart last? Oh, it lasted uh, only a couple of years. By that time, that's when uh, the license was showing up. So uh, had its fun. I passed it on to my brother. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened to it then, but while I had it, it was certainly fun. Oh, I bet. I bet you were the life of the neighborhood too. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> So, uh, out on, out on the farm like that, that's, uh, you know, I think that's a great way to grow up. The only downside to that is, is getting from, uh, from place to place and where you can, you know, see more girls. Uh, did you have a problem, uh, being out on lots of acres of land and having to travel great distances to, to get to Walmart? Well, you just get used to it. Honestly, uh, you just learn to be behind the wheel and that's where a lot of the, uh, the passion for, uh, automobiles came in the first place. You just enjoy driving them, uh, you like to be able to just uh, go wherever you want, that freedom that comes along with it. And especially being on the farm, you're busy most of the time. So you're not even uh, you're, you're not even jumping in the cab uh, when grandpa is driving to uh, buckle up. You're just um, hopping in the bed of the truck yeah. and riding there with the dog uh, running alongside the truck. Yeah. That, that, you know, it's a shame uh, so many people can't uh, have that opportunity these, these days. I mean, I, I understand they're not dying in a rollover or anything, but, but, you know, riding in the back of a truck is just so much fun. Uh, and actually, uh, it's, it's very similar to driving a, a Jeep or riding in a Jeep with the top off because, uh, it, it just dawned on me that, uh, that's one of the joys of uh, driving around in the Jeep. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when you have the doors off and you're able to look at the road, the pavement, the dirt, whatever it is uh, going right below you. And it's an amazing feeling. It's the same as uh, being a kid. And I was leaning over the bed route getting yelled at saying, stop doing that. But you see the dirt go by (laughs) and it's just a fun feeling. Yeah. So it must be a lot of fun for you for you guys. Now, I realize that uh, Tuffy makes products that aren't just for Jeeps. Uh, but, uh, that, that, that has to be a little fun to be working, uh, with, with such a fun vehicle. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Jeep is just, um, it's great cause you can put almost anything you want on it. The accessories that are available for, um, or a second and none, you can get about anything that you want. And that's, what's exciting about Tuffy is, I mean, we have everything that's going to range from the front bumper all the way to the tailgate and it doesn't matter, um, exactly what it is you're looking for we're going to have an option available for you and that's what's really exciting about our product lineup and of course one of the the, the nice things for a uh, a company like tuffy is uh, if you have a, a vehicle with all the the doors and the top off 
you kind of need to have some place that you can put stuff securely. It's like when we go to the beach, you know, where's that special hiding place for the keys in the wallet while you're swimming in the ocean, except this is kind of nicer because you actually have a nice large piece of metal that you can bolt these things to. And that's kind of what Tuffy's done is, uh, at least in my mind, from, from the Jeep uh, standpoint, you've made all these great places to, that you can lock stuff up. Not so much hide it, it's just make it more difficult to get to. Exactly. Um, you're not going to be able to get to that. And a lot of them we're going to use um, like on a deck enclosure or a tailgate enclosure in the rear cargo area. We're going to use that tailgate, but you still need a place to put your keys in. That's where like our glove box, our consoles, our undersea drawers, that's where they come into play because you can put combination locks on them, put your keys in it. They're, and because they're um, powder coated in black, they're not going to draw any attention to them. You're going to be the only one that actually knows that it's on the vehicle. But then you have a safe place to store everything without actually having to modify or retrofit your vehicle because these are designed to be direct fits. So they're going to bolt into the existing locations. Yeah, and and that's kind of an important thing, too. Uh, I I guess you can kind of cobble yourself something together. Uh, but if you have a, a nice, pretty uh, uh, Jeep, it's also, I mean, I, I think it's kind of nice to have a nice, uh, well-built piece of uh, uh, gear that you can uh, bolt in. And uh, for the folks that are seeing it, uh, they can look at that and go, you know, that looks nice. You didn't use three pounds of JB Weld to try to uh, <laughs> figure, <laughs> cobble something together there. So, And uh, Tuffy products have always been uh, something that I've thought of as being very solid and uh, very professional uh, looking, and uh, I think that's great. Uh, it, it, I love doing interviews for companies that uh, I've always uh, looked up to, so uh, it, it's great to be able to share this information with folks. I, th- I think everybody knows about Tuffy products, or uh, they certainly should. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And if you don't, definitely go on and check us at um, check on all of our products at uh, tuffyproducts.com because you're going to be able to find everything. And like you said earlier, it's not limited to just Jeep. Now, on the Jeeps, we are going to have everything going back to the CJ. We're going to have our CJ57. You're going to have your YJ, the TJ, the TJL, um, JK, JL. Um, and then you're also going to have all the uh, the late model uh, trucks out there. So we're definitely going to have something for either um, your rig or the uh, the tow vehicle. So definitely get on there and take a look. Yeah, and actually that's a that's a good point to make that even if you have a, a lockable vehicle, like you know Jeep does make lockable vehicles like the Cherokees uh, that well they made it one time, uh, and uh, you know it, it, it's nice to have that second layer of protection. And of course uh, there are uh, Wranglers with hard tops. But uh, having that second layer of protection is uh, is all is really nice, and of course for the really hidden products, uh, I love those uh, inserts uh, for the consoles that you guys make because now you have this this flimsy plastic thing <laughs> with a nice big solid heart to it. So you know, you I get to see the guy breaking into the uh, the Jeep, or you know maybe it's maybe it's wide open. You know, you got the top and the uh, the sides off, uh, the doors off, and the guy goes over to the console and pops it open and goes. Oh no, it's a toughie. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and it certainly happened. We've uh, we've had people contact us and they thank us for what we've done for them because I mean it really is a highly secure um, product that's easy to install. That's going to give you that peace of mind. And like I tell everybody, it's easy to break the glass on the window. It's easy to break the plastic oh, yeah. inside the vehicle, but it's steel. You're not going to bend. You're not going to break steel. Um, and that's what's nice is also on our products we do have. Um, our pry guard system that does help um, prevent opportunistic thieves from being able to get into the product. So we definitely put all the thought and engineering into it um, from the very beginning. Now, I believe your your overhead consoles uh, for the Wranglers, uh, that's set up to hold, I don't guess it has to be exclusively a CB, but I think generally speaking, uh, people put CBs in that little uh, cubby uh, 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 for the overhead console, don't they? Correct. Yeah. And it's going to fit anything that is uh, going to be a standard den size. So uh, a oh, lot of people, okay. they'll even put a, a radio up there because they don't want to put it in the dash. They'll put a radio up there. That way they can keep the dash clear because obviously somebody um, somewhere is going to be opportunistic and they might take a stab at trying to get that out. So with the overhead, they can definitely uh, keep that there and not have any worries. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I didn't realize whenever you said it's a single den, I was like, oh, well, you could put a stereo in there. And uh, make it make it that much more difficult uh, for uh, for people to take. It's like here it is, Bubba. Uh, but I don't. I wouldn't try taking it out of this steel box. So, and of course, you know, people can steal anything they want, but it's really the time and effort that they have to put into it. 
And that's what you're doing with the security stuff is you're you're making it more difficult. And the nice thing is uh, having that thing up there nice and high like that, people can look at that, uh, would-be thieves, we could look at that and go, nah, it ain't worth it. I'm going to move to the next one, which is really the whole point is that you're, you're, mm-hmm. you're just trying to get them to move along to some place else. You know, you feel bad for the <laughs> other guy, but they could have bought a Tuffy product too. <laughs> exactly. And that's also – one of the funny things about the overhead console, you'd be surprised how many people actually overlook that because when people come looking in the vehicle, they're usually looking down. They never actually look up, so they don't actually realize that it's up there. Well, you know, it's something I always tell my wife uh, whenever uh, she's trying to look at look for something and she can't find it and it turns out to be above, you know, uh, eye level. I tell her wild, an- <laughs> wild animals don't look up. <laughs> <laughs> always always flies real well when i do that but i still do it so i think that's kind of what we're talking about also too i think meth uh causes you not to look up <laughs> so it's probably the one of those two things now um now i know the gls are brand new on the market but you guys actually have some jl products that is right yeah um for the jl um already right now ready um to put in your vehicle um we have our console insert um as well as the deck enclosure in that cargo uh, for the cargo area and our tailgate lock box all are going to bolt into place um and use those existing locations so uh um, especially on those deck enclosures just take a look um there because if you have a uh, alpine subwoofer you will want uh, one specific SKU, and if you do not have the subwoofer, we do have a separate deck enclosure for those vehicles. So no matter which JL you have, we do have a deck enclosure to secure that cargo area. Yeah, see, this is really important, folks. Uh, the, the Jeep, because we bought a, a, a 2003 TJ for my wife, and, and the person that uh, had owned it prior uh, put a, uh, a subwoofer uh, uh, set up in there and had a nice amp and stuff. And I don't think that stuff costs that much these days, but this was a nice setup. And uh, one of the things that I was concerned about was is that there was no, uh, no way of securing that. It was just uh, in the little trunk area, if you will, the, the three and a half inches that you have there for a trunk. It's a little, it's a little bigger than that, but anybody that has a, a TJ knows there's not much room there. And uh, I actually got uh, something from, uh, uh, God, I keep wanting to say Best Buy. I actually got a, uh, a enclosure, trunk enclosure from uh, Best Top, which is actually a, uh, a company you guys have joined with now, uh, uh, haven't you? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we're part of uh, B-Bag, so that's going to be the Best Top um, Premium Accessories Group. And Tuffy is um, excited to come on board with that. It's definitely a a great opportunity. Uh, Some of the best brands um, are coming together, and that's going to include not only uh, Tuffy as well as Best Top, but Baja Designs, PRP Seats, Beatstrap. And uh, it's definitely a a one of those. We all uh, specialize in what we do, and we're the best at what we do. So joining forces, it just makes sense. Yeah, I remember when when I got that trunk enclosure for the TJ. I was thinking to myself, this is very much a like a a toughy style thing. So it kind of like this kind of seems to be a a match made in heaven. But anyway, this uh, this thing was really nice. Uh, And you guys have a, a JL security deck, which I believe is basically the same thing that encloses that that trunk area and if you've got an amp back there to run your subwoofer uh or even a subwoofer and amp uh combo like uh, we have in the tj this is a perfect way to help keep it with the jeep <laughs> so uh, because before that enclosure it was just the it was just there i mean there was no nothing really protecting it and uh it, it, whenever you have a jeep uh with a a, a, a nice large subwoofer and a good amp People are around you are going to know it's there. So it's not going to be like, well, if you can't see it, you can't find it. They they just need to be outside sometime and make note of what Jeep that was that, that drove thumping by. Exactly. And you know what? Jeeps, they draw a lot of attention. I've seen it oh, multiple yeah. times. So you, you park your Jeep, you go into the store, you get something, you come out, and somebody sitting in your front seat taking pictures, or they're just looking at it because they're admiring it because they want that someday. And eventually somebody's going to look in there and realize that you have those um, nice accessories and you want to make sure you can keep those. Yep. So uh, uh, I was just uh, looking here at the uh, the Tuffy uh, Products website, which I recommend you guys do. Uh, but, you know, hold on to your wallet. Uh, get your wallet before you uh, 
<laughs> you start looking because you go, wow, well, I didn't know they had that. I didn't know they had that. Uh, and this is a moment where I didn't know they had that moment for me. You guys have a flip up license plate holder uh, for the uh, the fair lead. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Clip on the fair lead and, and pop that thing out of the way. Now in Texas, you, know, you wouldn't think this would be true of Texas because you know it's, it has a tendency to be a, a, a at least people believe a, a do anything state. Uh, but in Texas, we have to have a front license plate. And if you have a Jeep with a winch, uh, that kind of makes it difficult. And one of these uh, pop-on license plates are great. I actually got one, uh, not a toughy one, uh, but, but mine doesn't flip up. I actually had to, to put a cable on mine. So whenever I take it off, it'll just dangle there uh, in case I forgot to pop it back on. But this thing is great because uh, you can use your winch and have a license plate there at the same time. Just flip up the uh, the, the license plate, or I guess you could put you know, a little plate on there that said Jeep or something. <laughs> if you don't have to have a front license plate, but this is great. It's a, it's 20 bucks. Actually, it's actually 19 bucks there from the site. That's a great price. I think I paid 30 bucks for mine and it, it, it doesn't even flip up. Really? Wow. It sounds like we got to get you taken care of, Tony. We got to get one in <laughs> your vehicle because we have it for both the Haas and the roller fairly. And that we have that same law. We're in Colorado. We have the same law. You have to have that, um, that license plate in the front, but you don't want to have to uh, zip tie it or have to put it to the side. You want to make sure it stays in the same spot, but then you have easy access to your fair lead. And that was really the idea behind that license plate holder. So we need to get one on your vehicle for you. Oh, that's great. I appreciate uh, that, that sentiment. Uh, it, uh, it really is very handy. Uh, I mean, you know, we really don't, I don't know how the cops are in Colorado about that. They really don't give you much of a problem around here if you don't have a front license plate. But I figure, you know, uh, why give them a reason? Uh, especially for a red Jeep. And if you, you know, if you drive around in a red Jeep, it's it's supposed to be worse. I got pulled over for doing 25 over the speed limit. And uh, this is a number of years ago. Uh, same Jeep, though. And uh, it was it was a uh, motorcycle cop. Otherwise, I would have seen him. Uh, but it was a motorcycle cop that pulled me over. And we spent the next thirty minutes talking about uh, jeeps. <laughs> and, and, he, and he wrote me a wrote me a warning ticket for several other things that what didn't include speeding. So you know, uh, uh, folks, having a jeep is uh, is not a bad thing. <laughs> So uh, anyway, uh, we have. Uh, you, you, I'm just looking here. I'm, I'm I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time paying attention. Tammy usually does this. She she shops while we're talking to our interviewees. This uh, one of these things. That, one of the things that you have here is a tailgate lock box. Tell us about that. That's uh, also for the Wrangler JL, which I would assume you got that for the JK. Uh, actually, that is false. This is a brand new product line. This is something that we just came out with. And it is specific only to the JL at this time. Yep. It's brand, brand new. Now, we do have plans to backdate this and have it available for the JK because once this got released, uh, JK owners, they've been uh, been flocking and they've been calling and asking, hey, we want this. We want this. So, trust me, we are getting that ready. Uh, We should have that for you soon. I don't have a time frame right now. But on the JL, it will bolt because there's that trail rail system. And even some of those JLs that don't have that trail rail, it is still going to bolt to existing locations on that tailgate. So now on that tailgate, when you open it up, you're not only going to have easy access storage, but um, when that door opens up on the tailgate lockbox, it's going to act as a um, a shelf. So you're going to be able to support about 40 pounds on that. So it really just kind of gives you that workstation at the back of your vehicle when you're on the trail or um, on the go. You know, um, that would be not a place to sit, but if you're doing a tailgating thing, that would be a great place to be able to, to do maybe do a little preparation of sandwiches or uh, hold your drinks or uh, all kinds of things that you could do with that. Now, this actually, uh, this is for you folks who haven't been over to the site, uh, you can look. It's called Trail Gate Lockbox for the Jeep Wrangler JL, and it basically bolts to the tailgate on the inside of uh, of the the door, and has this flip down panel. How much room is in there, uh, Jason? Is there uh, is there very much? You can't really store anything inside there, can you? Well, actually, you can. Um, I, I don't have the measurements. I don't know them off the uh, the top of my head, but I do know that you're going to have plenty of space to um, put uh, jumper cables, um, oh, a okay. strap. All right, and if you want to do the uh, the tailgating, you're definitely going to be able to hours like sandwiches. You can easily put a loaf of bread in there, and then it has the uh, the modular shelves on the inside. So then you can put the ketchup and mustard out of the way, and it's not going to land on the bread and uh, uh, 
bust that up. So you're going to be just fine and keep uh, keep all your uh, bread in good condition ready to eat a sandwich. Well, this is this would be great for uh, some mild uh, overlanding as well because now you have a place mm-hmm. to uh, to put your all your sandwich stuff. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, so you know, pry guard locking system featured one eighth thick uh, welded steel components. Uh, that sounds like some solid stuff. You know, nobody likes to spend uh, a couple hundred bucks on something and get it home and then go, man, I think I can bend this with my fingers. And I've never noticed that about Tuffy. Tuffy has always been solid stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, being steel products, we're, I mean, we, uh, we're a steel manufacturer, so we take in raw steel. And we're not using plastic or wood with our um, with our builds. Everything is going to be that steel construction. So it's definitely going to give you the uh, the highest quality product possible, and also it'll give you that longevity. That way, in five years down the road, you don't have to repurchase it because it's uh, deteriorated. It's going to withstand um, the elements, and it's going to outlive the life of the vehicle. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I I've never had that feeling about Tuffy products. I always figured if I had that. Uh, it, it's, it's going, if I ever sell the Jeep, it's going with the Jeep. <laughs> it's not going to be it actually a bit, uh, a a, 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 a good selling point. I, I got this toughy thing in there and blah, blah, blah. So, um, I, I, one of the things I was going to ask you about that I forgot, uh, what is probably the most, um, the, the thing that you guys sell the most? Oh, the, uh, the product that we sell the most. Yeah. Of? Okay. Um, it's probably it's it's a tight race uh, because uh, our truck products do um, really really well as um, as well. So it's probably between either the uh, deck enclosure for the uh, back of the jeeps, or it's going to be our under rear seat lock box for trucks that'll actually install underneath that back seat. So those two they're uh, they're very competitive. I don't know exactly which one is inching the other one out, but those are probably the top two. Yeah, and I'll just mention you know when I say. What's your most popular product? We don't care about trucks. I mean, there's tow rigs, I know, but we don't care about those trucks. We're just talking about Jeeps here. Now, that yeah. if you guys don't know it, they make great underseat uh, lock boxes. And uh, I think they they do slide out, don't they? I mean, I think you have models that are fixed and models that slide out, or is, am I wrong on that one? Uh, it, it really depends on the uh, the product that we're, um, we're looking at. But, yes, that is true. We do have some that are um, a drawer design. Uh, but more uh, likely than not, it's going to be our, our lock boxes. They're actually in a fixed position. Those are going to be a little bit more uh, popular. And you see those out there uh, more free, uh, frequently than you would with a uh, slide design. So I'll just mention this, uh, not to uh, not to scare any of you uh, anti-gunners out there, but if you got a conceal and carry, most places, most uh, states, I believe, have uh, have their laws where there's some places you can't carry your weapons inside. And there's nothing worse uh, I hear then, uh, either being put in the situation of putting your uh, weapon at risk of being taken because you don't have a good safe place to put it. And I would say that a Tuffy product and in, in one of these, uh, uh, lock boxes would be an excellent place to put it, especially cause it's out of the sight. It's black. It doesn't really show the, uh, show up that very well. And again, it's thick steel and you lock it. <laughs> so I think this is kind of a must have if, uh, if you have a, if you carry a weapon around, I know there's some States that you don't even have to have a permit, uh, but you still, you may not want to take the, the weapon in all situations or, or not even be able legally to do that. You need a good safe place to put it. And I think it's better uh, to have it with you and be able to lock it in those instances than just leaving it home because you may be going to some place where you, you can't have the weapon. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And actually, uh, following along with that point, there are some states, too, where you have to keep your ammunition uh, separate from the actual firearms. So oh, those we, bastards. I know. <laughs> and that, that's why it's nice that we have so many products, because you can easily do that, because you can put it on the driver's side, passenger side, front, rear. You're going to be able to separate those two, stay in compliance, but still be able to carry it with you. And that's what's nice is we do provide that opportunity for you. That's a good point. And I just got to say, Jason, you know, they, those are called the timeout states because when a bad guy shows up wanting to shoot you, you call a timeout so you can have time to get to your weapon. You know, just being a good sportsman uh, type thing, just, just give me a second. Let me get the ammo out. I got to unlock this. Got to put it in the weapon. Okay, let's go. You know, time in, boom, boom. 
So, uh, but no, that's a good point. Uh, and but there's lots of great products at Tuffy. You guys need to go over to uh, TuffyProducts.com and check this stuff out. But like I said, be ready to spend some money because they have some, some pretty much anything that you that you would like to have. Uh, I think the the security console insert is great uh, is a great idea because it's nice and hidden, uh, and uh, it, it, you know people just don't think of the center console as being a secure a secured area. It's like you put this stuff in there, but you know that it's just it's just plastic. It's just gonna pop open. It's gonna be really no, not whenever they pop open and they see this vault like thing. It looks like a, a floor vault almost. <laughs> so those things are great to have. Now, Jason, I know there's yeah. lots of well, lots of good uh, uh, social media things that you guys are in. Give the the folks some idea where they can go and, and find you guys on social media. Yeah, absolutely. You can go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're going to be on all the major ones. You can even find us on LinkedIn if you'd like to. And you can get on there, ask us any questions that you may have. Or if you ever want to talk to us in person, you can always just call us at our main um, our main number. Now, is it uh, do you just go by Tuffy or is it Tuffy Products on the social media? Uh, it's going to be Tuffy Products or um, Tuffy Security Products. I believe that uh, most of them it's going to be uh, Tuffy Products. Okay, so just look for Tuffy, and uh, then uh, when you're when you're searching there on the your favorite social media, then you'll know to look for security or uh, products. And and uh, if you if you see a bunch of stuff with locks and thick metal, then you're in the right place. Yep, secure your gear and organize your rig. Well, Jason, I want to thank you a lot for being with us tonight, and uh, I, I just hope that our listeners, uh, if, you, if, if we have some that didn't know about Tuffy, I hope we're introducing you to this stuff. It is really, really good stuff. I can't say enough uh, good things about Tuffy products. It's just a, a good, solid product, and if you need to lock stuff up, I think it's a, a great way uh, to do it in your Jeep. And even if your Jeep has a hard top and locking doors, I still think it's a good idea if for no other reason to keep dangerous things away from uh, dangerous people. Mm -hmm. And and that was actually something I wanted to uh, kind of go back to. You were talking about the console insert and then uh, the factory plastic lock uh, not being as secure. You don't think about it for that being the place to uh, lock things up. Mm -hmm. And that's something I wanted to bring up about the new JL that we actually found out is that the uh, JL keys, they're all being cut to the same etching. So even your neighbor with their own oh, set of keys man. open up your factory console in your JL, and that's why you need the console insert because you don't want them getting into it. I had no idea. This is like having those mm -hmm. super secure uh, uh, file cabinets at work, you know, on your desk or something. All the keys, <laughs> all the keys are the same. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> that's absolutely horrible. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, that that's where the need comes in because we have our own proprietary locks and keys. You're not going to go to any locksmith. They're not going to be able to uh, find any blanks. We're the only ones with access to them. And we have a multitude of codes out there. So it's definitely one of those uh, uh, need to haves. That way you can keep things in your vehicle without others being able to get into it. Uh, just real quick, exactly. just real quick, guys, I'll, I'll mention uh, looking at the, uh, the Tuffy uh, product site again. Uh, whenever you uh, select Jeep, these are the models they have available uh, listed for uh, for their items. The uh, Cherokee KL, Cherokee XJ, the CJ5, CJ7, 8, Compass, Cher uh, Grand Cherokee, Liberty, Patriot, Renegade, uh, SJ, JK, JKU, JL, JLU, uh, LJ, TJ, and YJ. You know, I, I don't see something on there, Jason. I don't know if you can say anything about it, but what about the J T the Jeep truck? Surely you guys have Ooh. had your hands on uh, hand an advanced copy of one. The Gladiator. Yep we've uh, we've been taking a look <laughs> at that one. We're we're getting ready. We're excited for uh, what the possibilities are. By all indications, uh, our console insert is going to be able to adapt straight over without any modification. But we're going to be looking at the uh, the Gladiator specifically and seeing what possibilities it's going to bring. So definitely uh, touch base. Uh, go on to Facebook or Twitter, and we're going to be announcing uh, new products for that when we have them available. Excellent. Well, Jason, thanks a lot for making time for us tonight. And uh, we're really excited to, to talk with Tuffy again. And uh, you guys get need to get excited. Go over there to the site. Look at some of the stuff. And I, I promise you, you'll get excited about this stuff. Great, great product. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Tony. Hey, thanks again for Jason uh, talking to me and taking the time to talk about Tuffy and security products. 
Uh, well, really, all the cool stuff they've been doing for Sheepers for so long. Great security uh, it, things. If you need to lock something up, uh, Tuffy's really the, the the place you need to go. Uh, of course, like like we spoke about, you can always build something yourself. But my gosh, they just make such nice, secure, well built, well good looking products. Uh, and can you believe that? Nineteen bucks for a uh, uh, a license plate holder to go on your, uh, your the front of your Jeep. Tammy, I can't remember. Do you guys have uh, laws in your state where you have to have a front license plate? Yeah, we have front and rear. Yeah. So if you were to put a, a winch on your, your Jeep, uh, you would still need to have a license plate on the front. And yep. th- this license plate holder it works great. And, you know, uh, I thought it was really cool that for 19 bucks you can either get one that used the roller uh, fair lead or the, what is it, Hoss, Hoff, yeah, that. Uh, the, the thing that they, that you use for the uh, synthetic line, cause I know you were uh, a big believer right. in the synthetic line. Uh, so it doesn't matter either one and 19 bucks from Tuffy. That's, that's really saying something. I, you know, I, the one I got for, for my Jeep and my wife's Jeep, uh, was, um, I want to say it's Smitty built or, uh, I can't remember now, but anyway, it was like $35. Oh my goodness. And it doesn't cool. flip. It's not a flip up. You just have to, you yeah. have to pull it off of the, the rollers. And I don't think right. they had a, a Haas, uh, uh, set up for, for the one I was looking at. Maybe I just didn't see it cause I, we didn't, that wouldn't, that didn't fit up. Right. You didn't need it. <clears throat> but, uh, 19 bucks is great. And, uh, anyway, it was a really good interview. So do you have an idea for a guest? Do you work in the off-road industry or know someone who does? Or maybe you would like to be a guest on the Jeep Talk Show. Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact right now. Just hit pause and do it right this second and share your idea for the next great guest. And, you know, there's some links there that you can actually go to uh, some Google Forms that we set up to to recommend a guest or uh, give us your information so we can contact you about being a guest. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And last week, Tammy, you mentioned something about a Nikki G spinoff podcast. And I wonder what that would sound like. I bet it sounds a, something a little like this. <laughs> oh my God. This week on the Nikki G Podcast, we talk about tinfoil hats, shiny side in, shiny side out, which fashion statement best fits you. The guest speaker of the week is a mango, <laughs> alien probing. Why is it that only one out of 12 men don't seem to mind as much? This week's comp segment, we talk about how to interpret the transmissions that your toaster oven is sending. All this and more on the Nikki G Talk Show. All right, boys and girls, uh, I'll chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. Cue the banjo twang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yep. You, could, you, could, you, that, you heard how tinny that was? That was the, the sound reflecting off of the aluminum foil, Tammy. It was. It was like I had to pull my headphones away from my ears. You know what? Nikki G's going to be big time someday, and we're going to say, hey, we got him his start. That's right. It's all because of me. It's all because yeah. of me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you must have needed this every day. I need it. It's the Deep Talk Show's must-have stuff. Pick of the week for your Jeep. So this must-have stuff pick of the week for your Jeep is... Because of the Tuffy interview, it reminded me when I bought my center console insert for my Jeep, in the directions it said, you know, trim tools. And I'm like, what in the, what are trim, why am I going to have to trim something in my Jeep to put this in? And reading more into it, these things are auto trim removal, like trim as in Ah. the trim of... So I was thinking I was going to have to trim something like cut, but it wasn't. So anyway, th- these are great for all those plastic trim in your vehicle. The one I found on Amazon, I actually bought mine at um, Harbor Freight because I needed them right now because I had to put my console in right now. Um, but anyway, over on Amazon, the the best pick for Amazon or the most purchased was the Trisalto Auto Trim Removal Toolkit. And what this is, this was a set of five for $9.99 and free shipping. 
But what these tools do is they allow for easy removal of your automotive trim because part of what you need to do for this center council, for example, is you need to lift up the council lid and underneath it, you have to take some things out so this council fits in. And by using these plastic tools, it removes the parts easily. Now, wait a minute, Tammy. We all know that a big flathead screwdriver will do exactly the same thing. Well, Tony, <laughs> yeah, it will. But, however... Um, It'll look like you used a big flat right. end screwdriver. <laughs> you don't want to bar the finishes and you don't want to scratch, you know, the plastic. And that's kind, of, that's kind of the point of these things, right? Get it right, off and exactly. not damage it in the process. Yeah. And there's many different, like, edges to it. They have, like, little hooks, little U's, a flat edge, a pointed edge for different parts of the trim that you would need. How do you know and what to use? How, how do you I, know which one to use? Actually, if I remember correctly, um, I don't know. Did it show? I think you just guess maybe, or maybe they I guess showed you it try correct. one and see if, you, yeah. if things are moving. And uh, uh, come yeah. uh, is it kind of scary when you're popping stuff off? Like you, you're not sure the that first, you're doing it right. Yeah, the first time I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should do this. But you know, just like with anything, I remember the first time of you know putting on my front bumper, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should do this. But once you do it, you're like, oh, easy peasy. Yeah, and you know. The, the first time is, is really hard. Um, and these are made of super durable plastic material to last a lifetime. And, you know, they're also great, you know, for your interior car or your Jeep or your SUV and furniture restoration. Really? That's what that says in the description on Amazon. That's so, interesting. Yep. So I guess you, if you needed to pull uh, some uh, some uh, cloth uh, off or, or yeah. get, get that stuff unstuck out from underneath, or you could use this stuff. Well, that's great. Nothing like spending ten bucks on something that you can use for all kinds of things. Yep, pretty good deal. You can probably uh, hurry that gerbil out uh, the, uh, <laughs> the the habit trap trail tube. Like, yeah, you know, get over there and get right. the wheel and run. We need something for the kids to watch. Now that you must have a set of these trim removal tools of your very own, we're going to make it easy for you. Just go over to jeeptalkshow.com and look for the link in the show notes of episode 366. we got to remember to put those in, Tammy. <laughs> People go over They're there and go, in. where is it? Where is it? I, I don't see I it. Are, I got them in. Excellent. Them in. Great. <laughs> always forget. <laughs> Hey, and coming up in a few minutes, you're going to hear a little bit about some events that are happening in your hometown and around the nation in Wheeling Wear. Hey, Jeep Talk Show. I had a question for you. Um, I know this is a very common question that people have about re-gearing. I uh, just bought a 2019 uh, JLU Sahara. Um, it is mojito green. And um, I'm getting ready to do a, the Mopar 2-inch lift on it, 35-inch uh, uh, BFG's KO2 tires. And I'm trying to find out whether or not I should re-gear. Um, I know there's not a lot of information about the JLs out there about re-gearing. Um, and people I talk to, there are just as many people that say, yes, you, you really need to do it. Um, I've looked online. There are other people that say, no, it's not really necessary for the JL. Um, so I'm just wondering, you know, what your advice is. Uh, it's got stock 345 gears in there. Um, it does have the 8-speed transmission in there. It's going to be mainly a daily driver for me. Mostly highway, but I am looking forward to uh, trying some trails. I've never done that before. So maybe take uh, some of the classes that are offered out there and, and to do some uh, beginner trails. So uh, just wondering what your thoughts are about that and um, look forward to uh, hearing back from you. Great. Have a wonderful new year. Bye. Well, Happy New Year to you too, Kevin. Um, I can't really say 100%, but I will say if the JL, if all those parts are pretty much the same as the Rubicon, you are not going to have to re-gear. I have 35s and I have 410s and I did not re-gear and everything has been fine so far. Yeah, it really is uh, the size of the tire that you that you have. You know what the what the size, the diameter of the tire was uh, that uh, the engineers thought was be would be a good size for the gear ratio that you have from your transmission, transfer case, and uh, differentials. How that uh, that that how that all works out, the gear ratio that it, uh, it works out to, uh, how that matches the tire size. 
So if, you, if you're not going up very much in tire size, if the diameter is not increasing that much, you're not going to see that much of a difference. Um, the, the, the answer to the question, should I re-gear? Yes, you should. <laughs> <laughs> you, you will always find some benefit in re-gearing uh, to a, a lower gear ratio when you go to a larger diameter tire. Uh, is it worth it? Because it is quite expensive and, Very expensive. and, pr- and pretty invasive uh, for the Jeep. It, it, one of the things I would recommend having a professional do. Um, so uh, is it financially worth it? Well, if it's primarily a, uh, a, a, a daily, daily driver, driver, I don't know that it would be worth it. The only time it might be worth it is if you notice a significant decrease in your miles per gallon. Uh, which I whole, uh, heartily recommend that you start mo- monitoring your MPG uh, now before you start modifying anything. I wish I had done that before I started modifying my Jeep. Um, so uh, the only time that you're going to be seeing an issue with a, an automatic transmission is like when you're going up and over overpasses. If it has to kick down just to maintain uh, 55, 60 miles an hour, then it's probably a sign that you need to re-gear. You may not see as much of an issue with that eight-speed transmission. With all that said, I don't think you're going to have any problems with it. Tammy, I think you had less of a problem because you were smart enough to get 410 gears in your Rubicon, which gave you more leeway for larger tires. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he said he's uh, 364 or what, whatever whatever it was. I thought I, I don't know if the JL is oh, different. Oh, I, I missed thought, that. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think the J, uh, if the the, uh, the standard one's like 373, so I don't know if 364 is something new for the JL. Uh, or well, what I that know is. that's... That's what my Sahara was, three seven three. Yeah, yeah, but I think he um, said three sixty four in the uh, in the voicemail, which, oh. which which sounded like a weird ratio to me. Right. But they may be doing huh. something different. Uh, right. But anyway, I don't think you have any problems doing uh, with thirty fives uh, on there. I think it'll look great. And uh, the only thing that I would take issue with is, and I always tell everybody this, including Tammy before she did her lift, uh, I would never go with your first wish on lift size. Unless now, it's unless it's huge. <laughs> now I will say, Tony, I think okay, yes, he could probably go to three point five um and feel pretty okay daily driving, but if I was four point five daily driving, I would be freaked the F out. Really? There's yes, there is I have there's this certain overpass that I like everyone else is going sixty five on it. It's like a curve up, you know, all those, well, you know, those flyways, overpasses yeah. when you have like 50 gazillion different overpasses. Well, there's one that curves and I'm, my kids and everybody's like, why are you slowing down? I'm I like, because I feel like I'm going to roll. And I think I would totally freak out um, with a four and a half inch lift. And the other part about that is especially like there's a spot on the road when I'm heading up to Rush Creek. And on a road when I'm going to work where it's like a wind tunnel and it blows me all over. And I think it would be even worse if I were up higher. But that would be the only reason is daily driving. Yeah. No, uh, I uh, and, and the only reason why I mention this is that uh, I've seen uh, years of people complaining in the forum. I right. wish I had got right. this lift. I should have gone with a larger lift. I'm trying to save you some money. Right. <laughs> Go for a bigger but, lift because but, most everybody goes, you know, one size and then later on they lift again because they wanted additional lift. I, I You know, three and a half, it sounds t- not enough for me. Uh, the TJ, I went with a four inch lift and it, it worked out really well. And my wife is the same up. way. My wife is the same way you are about the those those flyovers, Tam, uh, Tammy. Oh and God. she's always asking me to slow down. I'm like, Why? Why? We're gonna roll. We're no, gonna roll. we're not. And uh, well, <laughs> so but she, so she, with the four inch lift. Wood, Tony. Yeah, with the four inch lift on the uh, Tammy. I don't know if you've seen it or not. I've seen black barks a uh, hundred feet on those uh, those the outside of those flyovers. You know, the outside wall oh, where it means no somebody way. somebody smacked it and drove alongside it a good hundred feet, leaving black marks on their tires. And there's no broken broken concrete. There's no helicopters flying over. There's no life light taking these people away. I think you'd have to be an 18 wheeler to bust through those things. So it's neither here nor there. That it is what it is. And I always slow down about one mile per hour whenever she asks me to. 
but we're making great time, honey. I can't slow down. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would just really think about the size lift you're going to go with. And there's benefits for that when you go, uh, if and when you go off road, because you're going to have more clearance for articulation on those 35 inch tires. Mm hmm. Tammy will be playing the character Josh tonight on Camp Fireside Chat. Oh, I'm dying. <laughs> Figuratively, of course, but seriously, I'm going to start chiseling this stuff out of my skull, my damn self, if this pain doesn't subside soon. I can't believe he's going through this again. I don't know if you guys no, remember. I, I don't know. Know. Oh, remember if we, if we shared it or not, but Josh had uh, an infection or something in his, uh, his jaw, Stop. his jawbone. And uh, uh, it actually set him back on his uh, his Cherokee, uh, getting his Cherokee built back up so he could get it off road. Because uh, what was was it last year, Tammy, that he went through this? Because he had just gotten his uh, his um, uh, refund, his tax refund, and right. he had to spend it all on getting his jaw fixed. And here it is again. Right. I wonder if it's Same the other time. side. I wonder if it's the other side, and that, that's the issue. Uh, I'd be yeah. pissed off. I'd be looking for warranty uh, reimbursement if it's right. the same same side. Right, poor thing. He's in he's in a lot of pain right now. So everybody, say a little prayer and send some good vibes to the West Coast. Josh is in uh, in pain uh, a lot from from what he's told us, and he keeps it to himself a lot. So you know it's a lot a lot of pain if he can't be for the be here for the show because uh, he's used to working with pain. Yeah, and he never takes a day off, mm -mm, no. unlike the other guest on the or host on the show. Well, um, you, you forget her name. You scare your uh, scare. <laughs> you schedule yours. Uh, Josh works until he drops and just says, I, "I can't make it. Can't do it anymore." But you know, but he did do all the show notes for us before he before he dropped. So there you go. <laughs> so Tony, um, your Jeep talk show sticker paid off. Um, Nate messaged me. He was um, guiding a, a a group at AOAA, which is Anthracite. A outdoor adventure area up in Pennsylvania where he wheels a lot and he you know you finally sent him that sticker and it was on the Jeep and truth, somebody up truth be told Tammy is I sent all the other stickers out just as soon as just, as soon right. as they were requested Nate's was the only one that I held up for six <laughs> months <laughs> well somebody noticed the the Jeep talk show sticker and they said hey I know Jeep mama and <laughs> So they, you know, started talking about me. I'm sure they were making fun of me and everything. But anyway, <laughs> I just thought that was pretty cool that someone, you know, the Jeep Talk Show sticker got a conversation started. So yeah, that's, that's pretty great. cool. <laughs> Where did he put it, by the way? Um, I saw just a tight shot of the sticker, and I want to say by the gas tank. But I've seen so many Jeep Talk Show sticker pictures lately, I can't remember. So, because there was a guy with a red Jeep. That we sent stickers to, and then I've been sending stickers um, to folks who have been watching one of my YouTube videos. I put it out there, and they've been responding. So I actually don't remember where Nate put his. Maybe Nate can call in and let us know. Well, you can share a damn um, picture so we can post it on our social media. Right. <laughs> I didn't even know he's got. It. He he didn't mention anything to me that he's that he, yeah. he received it. So. And then remember about the guy who emailed asking about if 33-inch tires would fit his stock wheels. He was getting like mixed messages on the forums. He actually, <clears throat> he wants to get a bigger lift in 35s, but that's expensive. So he's thinking about just maybe getting, um, he was thinking his tires were 32s. They're actually 31s. So he wants to like step it up to maybe 33s, but he wasn't sure if they'd fit on the stock wheels and I wasn't actually sure either so I reached out to Jeff over at Adrenaline Off-Road. Jeff's my um, mechanic that I go to for things that I can't do mm -hmm. and he said the deal with the factory JK wheels is they are 7.5 inches wide. Right. That is what limits how wide of a tire should be run. Mm -hmm. Now most JKs come with 32 inch tires and he has put some skinny 33s and even 34s on the orig uh, the OEM JK wheels without any issues. Right. But they look like cookie cutters. Sure. <laughs> and 
He said anything wider than about 11.5 should be run on aftermarket wheels, which will also push the wheel farther away from the center of the vehicle to prevent rubbing. And some people do run 12.5 inch wide tires on the 7.5 wide wheels and they add wheel spacers, but that's not the correct way to do it. I'm glad you said that, Tammy. I, I, I get in those those discussions online about the wheel spacers. I won't use them. I, the, to me, it's just not a good idea. So it just uh, I've ex- I've seen people explain how they work and show me, and I'm like, it just doesn't. To me, it just didn't seem right. And it's good to hear that from Jeff. Jeff has worked on probably billions of Jeeps. He's constantly busy working on Jeeps, and so I trust him. With what I, he knows. I, a good friend of mine that knows a lot about vehicles uh, has no problem using them, and I trust him. Uh, I think that just as a rule of thumb for myself personally, I don't like the idea of space wheel spacers. Now, a lot of it has to do with how thick the wheel spacers are or how many of them you're using. And that last part's a joke because you see some memes on there where people stack them. Right, right. <laughs> you can get the wheel about, you know, a foot right. out from where it, where it belongs. Uh, but, uh, uh, and also, too, some of them are just installed improperly. You have to have a clean surface uh, that you're mounting them on. You probably should use uh, some sort of, uh, uh, like, blue Loctite uh, on the bolts that, that, that hold them to the uh, the, the hub, the, the, the rear axle. And because uh, I have seen some, some uh, adapters come off vehicles and the wheel you know keeps going and it probably is just not being installed properly but i i just don't like the idea and i got into one back and forth with somebody about uh my uh, assertion that it, it applies additional torque to like on the front wheels to the wheel bearing assembly and can cause premature failure and uh you know it ha- there's several things to that but if you move as you move the wheel out away from the center line you're applying more torque to the side of the bearing and it's going to cause it to wear out sooner. Uh, yeah, just, if that's wrong, let me know people. But uh, to right. me, it just makes sense. Um, I don't know. I just dealing with anything under your Jeep. I don't know. I'm just very cautious. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to be. Yeah, right. and, and you'll find that you can get away with a lot of things and, oh, I'm and, sure. and, and still survive and the Jeep will be just fine. I, right. I personally... Go with the 33s because the, the whole idea behind uh, going with uh, with larger tires is to give you more ground clearance. Right, and, exactly. And if it's narrow, uh, it's still going to give you the ground clearance, uh, and it's still going to work fine on rocks, uh, and the and you're going to get better MPG out of a narrow tire than you will a wide tire. Won't look as cool, but it won't cost you as much. Tony, it was funny talking about you talk about miles per gallon all the time and how you monitor it and stuff. So I forget who I was talking to the other day about that. And I said, you know what? I have not reset mine since the day I got my Jeep Um, because I just don't track it. Mm -hmm. So from the day I drove the Jeep off the lot till today, my average MPG, right, miles per gallon, is 13.8. Not bad. I'm sure it was so a lot better before you, you know, lifted it and uh, put the right. 35s on it. You were, but now I wish I would have paid more that, attention that's why, to that. That's, but, why I'm, yeah. I'm, that's why I'm saying, you you know. I'd be curious to see how it did before the lift, I got before a little, the tires. Yeah, I got a little app on my phone, and every time I every time I fill up since, uh, like, 2005, right. uh, I have gone in and I put in, you know, how much it cost, uh, what the odometer reading was. And uh, how many gallons uh, I, I put in? So I have uh, my uh, uh, all my fuel consumption from from all that time back, and it's it's a great tool for seeing how well your vehicle is running. Uh, now, because, what app is that? Um, the name of it? Because right, I have a video mileage. I think is it, it's a very generic name. It's like there's lots of them out there, and you just you just plug the information in every time, and and it calculates automatically for you. Uh, and, and the great thing is, is that I can do a little screenshot when I get a, go above uh, the rare occasions that right. I get above 13 miles per gallon. I can you do can a screenshot it. and say, you know, you're a Jeep owner whenever you get really excited about right. 13 miles per gallon. <laughs> um, the reason I ask you for that is because I have a video of the top apps to use with your Jeep mm-hmm. or when you go. 
and I only could come up with three. So now this will be number four. I just have to find one more and I can have top five. That's true. That's very true. So one other really quick thing. I just want to update everyone on Shodi. He's the young man who... It's weird calling him a man because I know him as a kid because I watched him grow up. Mm -hmm. But he had the Cherokee. He got in an accident. The pickup truck turned into him. And have have we talked about teeth. this on the show before or is this all new for the for our listeners? No, I think we mentioned it before. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did. Yes, I did. I know we've talked about it uh, online, yeah. you, know, you, me, and Josh. but I'm pretty sure I did. Um, and anyway, he rolled his Cherokee, he crashed it, it's totaled, and he was very devastated. He's this young kid who has gone through a lot of adversity, and he's, you know, persevered, and he spent, you know, he works um, at a mechanic shop, he saved all his money, bought this Cherokee, spent thousands of dollars uh, upgrading it, and he loses it all. Well, he's going to get some money back from the person that pulled in front of him, right? So I don't know, you know, what's happening with all that part of it. I do know um, physically he, the update is he's better. He went to see an orthopedist. Um, he's still limping. He can't go back to work because there's a lot of heavy lifting. But the exciting news is he's going to go look for another Jeep this weekend. So um, I'm hoping to hook up with him and um, just sit down and chat with him about all that he went through in that accident. That'd be great. It'd be uh, good uh, too if he actually gets a Jeep uh, before you sit down and speak with him so we have a, a happy uh, ending to that story. And the funny thing is I put it out there, does anybody know of any Cherokees for sale? And a Jeep mom that I met at one of the ladies off-road training, she had a Cherokee. She sold it four years ago to this other person up here in Maryland and now that person is selling the Cherokee but it's all white with pink accessories. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I know you can paint and depends everything. On the, but de depends on the price. I mean, my right. gosh, you know. It's $2,500. Oh, my goodness. So, uh, yeah. how, uh, that, how many miles is it? A four point, Make sure he gets a 4.0, Tammy. Don't let him get one of those uh, four uh, cylinders. Those I things will. are crap. And I, I, don't, I don't know. I started arguing with people. I just don't <laughs> like the what is whatever it is, 2.5 or whatever the it is. Right. Just get the 4.0. Uh, so I'll, always the best way to go for a Cherokee. So that's all I have, Tony. Hey, would you like to join the Campfire Side Chat? You can go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out all the ways you can reach out to us. Now some events from around the world and maybe in your neck of the woods. Let us know about your event. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and click and fill out our Wheeling Wear form. So early bird heads up, King of the Hammers 2019. It's the big one, folks. This is always exciting, and if uh, if nothing else, it's great just to watch the helicopters all fly around chasing people. It's a week-long off-road race uh, festival be begins on Friday, February 1st, 2019, with the opening of uh, Hammer Town in Johnson Valley, Valley, California. Tammy, I can't help it. Every year, same thing. I keep thinking about MC Hammer, you know, the, the opening, right. opening up Hammer Town. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> So, and uh, we also have Arizona Military Vehicle uh, Collectors Club presents 28th Annual Arizona Military Vehicle Show 2019. Oh, Military Vehicle Show. That just sounds exciting, Tammy. That, that, that to me would just be a lot of fun to ooh and ah over things. That's January 26th and 27th. It's the Diablo uh, Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. And, of course, we'll have the links to these things in the show notes. California Four-Wheel Drive Association Winter Fun Festival. It's January 25th to the 27th, Grass Valley, California. Uh, if you need more information, more uh, events, and links, visit the JeepTalkShow.com website for this episode, which is what, 366, Tammy? Over a year's worth of episodes. That's a lot of it shows. It is. A and lot of binge listening. Well, you got, you're got you over 200 and uh, over 200 episodes, aren't you, with us? Um, I started at 150. Was it 150? So, yep. Yep, yep. So quite a few, quite a few. Hey, that's it for the show this week, fellow Jeepers. Until next week, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Jeep Talk Show. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. He reads that every week. I wonder if it's true, Tim. It is. <laughs> so then the wife says, you're embarrassed? 
I'm the one sitting here with three dinner rolls shoved up my tailpipe. Ah, you gotta use a real butter, Tammy. Podcasting since 2010. Hey, not ready for the show to be over? Well, we can understand that. Now you can hear more Jeep Talk Show goodness by installing the Jeep Talk Show app. Just go to Apple or Google Store, search for Jeep Talk Show, and hit that install button. Not only will you have the latest episode, but our entire library of shows. Plus, and only on the Jeep Talk Show app, you'll have access to bonus content. Look for the bonus content icon on the Jeep Talk Show app and hear what goes on after the interview and after the show.